So a couple of weeks ago, I looked at how you could use a custom control value accessor in order to change the behavior of the file type input such that ng-model would emit the file objects and not just the file paths. As a follow-up, I wanted to see if I could create an autocomplete behavior using a custom value accessor, a custom control value accessor on a text input. So for example, imagine that I'm passing this array of string values into this text input with ng-model under the hood. And as I type, I want these suggestions to be applied to the text input. So if I type I, you can see that the first one, I like to move it, move it, comes up and it's highlighted there so that as I continue to type, I will override the values I like big, or I could say I like turtles, right? I can come back here and say I love lamp, I love that thing you do, and so on and so forth. And notice that as I'm typing, the suggested text is highlighted such that if I hit any other key, it will automatically override this highlighted value. Or if I hit tab, for example, well, actually first notice here that the ng model value isn't actually being changed to reflect the selection, right? Because the selection isn't part of the view model. The selection is what we suggest could be part of the view model. So as I type, even though I have an additional input value here, only the non-selected slash user provided portion is what's actually part of the ng model value. Now, if I do something like hit tab to accept the selection, notice now that the ng model value has been updated to reflect the value. Now, how does this work under the hood? Here's my app component, and you can see here are my uh, array of strings that I'm suggesting, and here's my ng model instance and you can see this looks very normal I have a normal input type text the only difference here is that I'm passing in this ng model suggestions attribute now behind the scenes this attribute is actually allowing us to target this input and provide a completely custom control value accessor that's implementing this auto suggest functionality and let's take a look at how that works so here is my ng model suggestions directive which implements control value accessor and if we look at the selector we'll see that it uses sort of the normal ng model selector type text ng model attribute but then it also provides this additional ng model suggestions attribute targeting and what this allows us to do is override the value accessor provided to this input element. So normally it would get the default control value accessor, but here at a lower level in our dependency injection tree, we're saying actually use this class as the control value accessor for this particular input. And here you can see it provides the input bindings for that ng model suggestions, which I'm aliasing as suggestions internally. And there's a bunch of code here. I've heavily commented it but well, let's look at the handle input because this is what's reacting to the actual user interaction. So if we jump down to user to handle input, what we can see here is that we're getting the new value out of the element and we're checking to see if the new value starts with the previous value. And that's so that we only handle suggestions as the user is typing at the end here, right? So for example, if I was typing somewhere back here, Right? I don't want to start suggesting things because that would put a selection at the end, which would be unusual because my cursor is actually not at the end of the string. Right? So we only want to do it when the user is at the end of the string. Then I look to see if the cursor is actually at the end of the string. Right? And the reason that we have these two things, it might seem like we only need to check where the cursor position. But if we didn't check the cursor position, then we would actually start auto-suggesting as the user was backspacing. Because even though you're backspacing, your cursor is still at the end, but backspacing fails this one. So here, once we get to the proper conditions, we then take the new value in the input, we check to see if there are any matching suggestions, getting just the first one that matches. And if we have an active suggestion, we slice off the back portion of it, right? Which means that we're grabbing just this portion of the suggestion. If we didn't get just the back portion, if we attempted to apply the entire suggestion, what we would do is override the user's key casing. So for example, here I have a lowercase i, and if I were to use the entire suggestion, I would replace their lowercase i with an uppercase i, which is probably an unexpected behavior. Once I have that portion of the suggestion, 
you can see that we're going back to the native element, the underlying input element. We're changing the value to include both the existing value plus our portion of the suggestion that we want to auto-suggest. And then we're updating the selection of the input to contain that suggestion suffix. And that's what allows us to highlight the rest of the text here, which allows us, which allows the user then to override it with any subsequent key presses, right? And that's basically all there is to it. I mean, the rest of this is a bunch more code here, but most of this is just to sort of support the general control value accessor interface, as well as support some of the, the, the use cases for adding and removing the selection. Um, but hopefully, what this does is, is demonstrate really the power and the flexibility of the ng model and the control value accessor approach in Angular. And, and I think really just showcases how well this has been thought out. Right? Think about it. In, in almost any other framework that I can think of, doing something like this would require creating some sort of higher order component that hides the input right? and would require you to pass in CSS like through the custom component in order to style the input. And in Angular, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to jump through any of those hoops. Here we have our native input. We can style this input. We can access this input. We have the ng model functionality right out of the box. And all I'm doing is augmenting the control value accessor that's being provided by the dependency injection container for this element, which allows us to change the way communication is bridged between the view model and the underlying document object model. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Hats off to the Angular team, guys. You really, you really just thought this through.